Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for November 14th, 2016. Sure. Public comment period. Is anybody in the public who would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements of the <coughs> calendar. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, King's Tide tomorrow, I guess, so be careful of flooding and stuff. And also, what a beautiful moon, the closest it's been to the Earth since <coughs> 1948. Wow. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the election uh, is over. Uh, a heartfelt thanks to those uh, that uh, work for the town, the town clerk's office, the town moderator, the volunteers that performed such a, uh, a wonderful task with uh, max turnout. Uh, for those that voted, took the time to do that. For those that uh, participated in the races, uh, uh, just a remarkable, remarkable uh, experience in democracy and uh, the free state of New Hampshire. Um, Regarding Mr. Merrill, Russ Merrill, uh, as you travel throughout the world and you read history, uh, New Hampshire folks, uh, they're in space, they're on top of Iwo Jima, uh, sometimes they're in Black Hawk Down, but uh, it's a tremendous, tremendous uh, practice of uh, extraordinary character throughout the world. and It's fostered here at home, and there's no greater uh, example of that than Mr. Merrill and his contributions to his family, uh, his community, carrying on from his father uh, at his house of worship, uh, as a uh, local public servant, as a servant in Concord, uh, and on Academy Ave. So we wish his family the best in his loss. He's with his lovely wife, uh, Ada. And uh, to Jeff and Dean and their families, God bless. Thank you. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> it was an exciting election, and uh, I think it went pretty well over there. I don't think we had too many complaints, um, except everyone that went at the beginning. <laughs> um, but you can't really plan it. But it seemed to go pretty smooth all the time. So I think it was a great thing. And I um, also would like to send my respects to the Merrill family. <clears throat> Thank you. Next thing is the consent agenda. We have uh, Hampton Cemetery deeds. We have a proclamation for wreath across America. We have a petition for an underground gas line. We have the 2016 Equalization Ratio Certificate. We have the 2016-02 Supplemental Real Estate Property Tax Warrant. And we have a donation in lieu of flowers to Russ Merrill for the Hampton Historical Society. Motion to move the consent agenda. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next we have is the approval of the minutes. First one are October 31st, 2016. And the second is November 7th, 2016, non-public session. I'll make the motion. Motion by Regina, seconded by Rick. All those in favor? Unanimous. First appointment we have this evening is uh, Farine and Schuler, 815 Ocean Boulevard, Sewer Easement Setback Relief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Select Board. Uh, um, here as a continuation from last week, my name is Tim Phoenix. I'm an attorney from Hopeful Phoenix, Gormley and Roberts in Portsmouth. I'm here uh, with and on behalf of uh, Brad Schuler and Cindy Frenet, who are with me today. Um, also here again is Brenda Colbo from MSC, who's done the technical work, and Andy Thompson, the proposed builder. When we left uh, last week, um, a request was made uh, and a motion made and passed to uh, get the take of the two people on either side of Brad and Cindy uh, to this proposal, uh, remembering that there's only three homes served by the line in question. So uh, we did that. We've attached letters. Uh, uh, Mark Gerald had assisted me with getting some information and had asked that I uh, respond through him. So I did a letter to him. Hopefully you folks got it with the short week last week. I, we only got these on Thursday, so I was only able to get the hard copies over here today. Um, although I did email it to Mark on, on Thursday. So presumably you have it. Um, so we've answered that question. They don't, uh, those, the neighbors uh, are fine with this proposal. I'd also point out that um, if something were to go wrong there, it's Brad and Cindy that take that risk because it's their, their house. No one else's home is, is, 
nearby. I also uh, mentioned last week, but did not have prepared to give you, but I've attached a few examples around town uh, from various times, various years, and various circumstances of where there are uh, sewer lines that are in an area that's uh, less than 20 feet in total width, uh, very close to buildings, et cetera. I'll acknowledge that and oftentimes that's where the buildings are already there, um, but it, it is done, it can be done. So very briefly, um, I, I want to repeat that we do understand the um, uh, concerns and position of the DPW. We just think that under all of the circumstances, um, given that um, the deed itself says, um, the original uh, deed to the underlying land says that is the stricter of the deed or the uh, ordinance or regulations. There is no regulation. Um, that means it's a reasonable width as contained in the deed. Uh, we think we've demonstrated that there is enough width to allow them to build the home they want and leave the line where it is, so we're asking for your approval. Be happy to answer any questions that you may have. No. Public Works. Uh, I think Public Works is the comment, just so okay. we get it on the record. Can we, uh, Chris, you want to come up with comments? Okay. I'm not sure that everybody had the chance to read the memo that I sent out uh, this morning. I had forwarded it last week, and again, same thing by the time it uh, got sent out. Basically, the purpose of the memo was really just to reiterate, um, you know, our position and how we felt. Uh, that it was close to the pipe that the standard engineering world it, it is in construction world it is 10 feet it's 10 feet for a reason um, we need to be able to get in there shore up the sides uh, have the room we are dealing with the uh, sand uh, wet areas um, I also thought it'd be helpful just because we're sitting inside a room uh, I had sent along some pictures as well uh, to show you what was surrounding uh, the area as far as the house that would be what is it number four nine street uh, and then the properties uh, to both the north and south uh, of where this line would be um, in there you know we understand that you, there is a concern on the table you know it, it impedes on the overall uh, garage size that they'd be able to build um, we contend that there still would be 30 feet uh, for the two-car garage and still have the 10 feet on each side of the pipe um, if the board chooses uh, to go with the less width, we do ask that that get put in writing so that the dimension is um, there and maintained. We also feel it uh, important that uh, perhaps the line be replaced uh, so that you know we don't have to worry about it for 50 years. Um, if it's in there in good condition, then we don't risk uh, any issue as far as uh, overburden pressures or uh, damage due to the length of the pipe. Um, also, where this will be deeper than the foundation, uh, by the time you excavate for the trench box and the pipe and everything else, that uh, in uh, in written form that we you know we be held not responsible. Uh, that if the pipe were to collapse or to be break you know to break uh, and cause any settling of their foundation, that we not be held liable for that. Um, so that's really a summary of what my memo said. Uh, and I leave it to any questions that you guys may have. Question from the board? Yeah, we also received a memo, too, from town council. Would he be able to... Uh... He's there. Is he? Okay, go ahead. Yep, yeah. go ahead. Good evening. Hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, you've uh, gotten also a briefing from me, which I'd like to summarize. Uh, there are two places in the uh, deed from the town, and this was formerly leased land, and there are deed restrictions that indicate in deed restriction 5 that the town is entitled to use a strip of sufficient width for the installation and maintenance of storm and sanitary sewer mains. And in the second paragraph after deed restriction 7, the town has reserved from the conveyance any public rights of way on or under any existing sewer lines and the right to improve, maintain, and expand as reasonably required the above said betterments, easements, rights of way consistent with the overall needs of the town now and in the future. Um, there is not in the deed a specified width, uh, nor is there in our current sewer installation ordinance a specified width of from building to pipe 
but nevertheless, the property rights of the owners are bounded by the selectmen's ability in your discretion to decide as sewer commissioners what is a sufficient width and what is uh, reasonably required. Um, Public Works has given you some uh, ideas about what the industry standard is of 10 feet, and they have also apprised you of some risks that I would be concerned for the town's sake of liability in that the soils involved here in this particular environment right across from the ocean are uh, primarily sandy and wet such that if the pipe needed to be excavated, the technology that would be used is trench box to prevent uh, cave ins. And um, as has been explained to you last week as well as this, to, to get below that pipe you'd be going down five to six feet, whereas the frost wall for the um, garage here would be down four feet, so you'd be below the garage level. And given the soil involved, you'd, you'd have a risk there of, of a cave-in, which is not only property damage to uh, the pipe of concern, but also to the foundation and potentially uh, uh, personal injury to those who are working there. The environment in which someone would be working to fix a, a pipe that's damaged could be any kind of weather, as we know, we experience, and um, also could be in the dark as well as the light. And um, there are also some other features around if you were forced to work more on the westerly side of the pipe than the easterly side. Uh, the pictures that have been provided by Public Works show that there's some shrubbery there uh, as well as um, a whole line of it as well as a fence that would need to be taken out. So I would suggest to you I agree with Public Works that uh, if the board in its discretion decided to allow uh, a um, this particular building to be built uh, closer than the 10 feet industry standard, uh, that there should be a uh, hold harmless and indemnification agreement which the owners would sign, which would bind them and their successors. Should there be any problem both by way of property damage or personal injury in the event that pipe were to need to be worked on in the future and there were some uh, cave-in of soils as a result of uh, the proximity of the trenching to the foundation. And that uh, we have seen this type of indemnification agreement in other instances primarily uh, we've insisted upon that with uh, the force mains in which people tap into our sewers up on uh, Drakeside Road where the technology is such that there's a potential, if it's not maintained properly, of a, uh, of a um, backup in, into the uh, owner's property. And so the town is held harmless from that. That's an analogous type of document. And uh, if the board saw fit, I would recommend that uh, my office could draft such a thing for the signature of the owners, if the board allowed it. OK. Regina? Uh, no further questions. questions. May, I, may I respond, Mr. Yep. Mr. Chairman? Unless uh, folks oh, have ahead. questions of Mark. Go ahead first. before you have any questions. A um, couple of things. One, um, I do not, did not get the benefit of having the DPW's mem memo, so I wasn't able to review that. I can't really respond to it directly. It would have been nice to have gotten a copy. Um, we would agree to put the frost wall in that area at six feet, so it's below the um, existing lowest level of the uh, existing sewer line. Um, Peter Brown couldn't be here today, uh, but he did tell you last week that based upon his 37 years of experience doing this, that um, it's not an issue, it's not a significant issue. Once the wall is there, um, there should be no basis for any cave-ins that's caused by the existence of the um, home. That said, we would be willing to sign a, a hold harmless as proposed by Mark as long as it's clear on the language that it would have to be something that uh, damage to person or property that's caused by the fact that there's not enough, there's only six feet of room, not for anything that happens because anything could happen whether you have uh, eight, 19 feet, which is what you have here, or uh, 20 feet. It's also um, my understanding from Brad that the significant concern about soils in the area is not along this area, but it's behind it to the west along Kings Highway. Uh, I don't know if that's true myself, but that's uh, my understanding. Finally, as far as the width, 
Um, <coughs> closest to the house, because the land slopes down, there has to be a platform and stairways to, to access the, the various levels of both this addition and the house addition, which are at different levels, so you have to build landings. Once you factor that in, you have to put the garage on the outside of it, so you can't just move everything in because then you can't use the stairways to access the upper floors. So in conclusion, uh, again, I say I respect the, um, the concerns, um, but um, if you just look quickly at these examples I've given you, um, these are just some that, that uh, Brenda's office found all over town. The first one is three feet in width. There's sewer lines going underneath buildings that aren't problematic. So um, we just feel that if you balance the property rights and the words in this deed and the fact that there's no specified width, they couldn't have gone to anywhere in the town's records and said, how, how wide does a sewer easement need to be? Because it doesn't say anywhere. So that takes us to this, what's fair and reasonable under the circumstances. And for all the reasons we've said, we think it's fair and reasonable as proposed. Thank you. Uh, there is one other factor to consider, but it's more for their consideration. Uh, given that they're building the uh, building between their current building and the sewer line, somewhere the Y is going to come out, and I don't know how deep that is in relation. I don't know where that is going to be in relation to the building. It may go right under the building, so there may be some di disturbance involved there. If they're going to be going down below the level of the pipe, they may need to relocate the Y that hooks into the sewer. If I may let Brad explain where that is, because he just tried to explain it to me and I didn't understand it. <laughs> so so the, where the sewer line comes out, out of our foundation, it's four feet or less. I'm giving you more leeway on the southerly most side, which doesn't even come into play with where we're digging. And certainly that would be something we would take care of if there was a failure when we're digging. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Thank you. It's a Jim? reasonable point. Yeah, I mean, you know, while I understand and, and recognize their ex expert and he had 37 years of experience and has done a lot of this and there's other places like this, I also have to, I think, I, I have to go with our DPW and their recommendations and they're the ones that are going to be working on it. Uh, living down at the beach also and knowing what the soil's de like down there, I gotta, I gotta listen to what they're saying. So uh, that that's where I'm coming from. And if if we were to give it, it, it we have to have a very strong legal document that we're held harmless. Yeah, I've lived at the beach for 53 years. I've seen more houses uh, have worked on along Ocean Boulevard. And all along Ocean Boulevard isn't sandy. Uh, there may be some little pockets of sand, but I have I am the lowest point on Ocean Boulevard, and it's dirt all around my house, all underneath my foundation. I filled in the foundation that I had under my house, and I have a floating foundation today. All up and down on Ocean Boulevard, little cottages have been moved, big houses have been built on over and over and over again. All over Hampton, there are sewer pipes under buildings, houses, far closer than this. That's why these people are coming. They're looking to get uh, some type of, um, uh, you know, it's like the, it's an appeal that they're making because this is a specialized instance. This is not a big deal. They're willing to sign whatever they have to sign. I have never. I just can't even think of any houses um, that I've even seen the sewers disconnect or anything like that, ever, on Ocean Boulevard. There might be one here or there, or someone had some old pipe, but I think that we could worry about every pipe in Hampton, but we don't. And I think that this is not as big a deal, and I would like to make the motion to allow it, with the conditions the lawyer recommended. Cool. I'll be supporting uh, Selectman Griffin's comments. I've reviewed the uh, pertinent documents. Uh, I respect uh, our public uh, works opinion. Uh, I find it interesting when uh, Esquires are talking about construction uh, matters deep uh, below the earth, as much as three or four or five or six feet, Esquire, respectfully. Uh, I've been to a vision appraisal uh, and looked at your beautiful property and the wonderful things you're doing down there. Uh, your uh, expansion is in the spirit of uh, a freeing up of uh, uh, the deed uh, and uh, property owner rights, much as uh, the accessory dwelling unit uh, phenomena that is occurring throughout New Hampshire. 
and this is perhaps an extrapolation or a, uh, an example of that. And uh, uh, thanks for your patience, and thanks for coming back in with your butters. The uh, property value, and we all have a pretty good idea on what the um, tax rate is in this town. Uh, your property is assessed with the land at $824,000. In uh, cooperation with uh, the fine assessing staff we have, there are four properties in proximity that um, uh, uh, are affected by the sewer line. Mr. Chinka responded to me today. It's uh, 1459. Uh, he copied the chairman. He copied other uh, staff members here. Uh, 1815 OB, 1813, 1817, 49, 49th. Uh, it is $3.133 million of assessed value. Uh, the tax total for all those properties combined uh, in 2016 is over $50,000. So um, a good chunk of change for the town of Hampton. I have read uh, from uh, Esquire Hofold, Phoenix, Gormley and Roberts, his 10 November uh, email and hand-delivered letter to our town council. Uh, Alpha through Golf, he has cited specific uh, legal precedent uh, with uh, pipes that are much uh, less adherent to, uh, as we have heard, uh, construction or industry norms. I have examined the abutters, the uh, uh, letter written by Susan Cowett uh, that was done November 9th in support of this. I have read the letter from Mr. Uh, Edward Millett on November 8th that is in support of this. Uh, the examples or the documents provided by um, council here tonight that's representing the property owners, uh, very, very graphic, very, very detailed. So I support that, I support what Rick says. I have uh, bored uh, you, Mr. Chairman, and other board members with uh, perhaps an extensive, much more extensive construction experience than Attorney Gerald in, in a, as a younger man and uh, seen some tight spots, and I think this is completely doable. I will second uh, Mr. Griffin's motion and add the final caveat that I think that uh, the hold harmless is uh, uh, a difficult thing for the applicant and property owner to secure a, uh, a transfer of risk or risk management issue. Uh, and uh, subrogation efforts were something to go wrong. We've examined the property values. It's $50,000 of juice, if you will, that comes into the town. Uh, they are asked to um, uh, have a standard that far exceeds past precedent, and I'm concerned for their interest in those that would assume that property, uh, that uh, that hold harmless would be difficult for them to secure a risk management tool that would protect their personal financial interests. So I would go easy on that and would be less inclined to uh, support that. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time. I have one more thing to say. Go ahead. It, I just want to point out, too, that all throughout this area, not so much on Mission Boulevard, but almost in every case behind it, there are multiple dwellings on, on one lot. And you can't tell me that they're not closer than 10 feet. I assume that the people that built the dwellings, put, the, put them in themselves, didn't even have experts to build them and connected them to the sewer themselves. The, this is going to be done right. I think that we have a lot. We really should be thankful that they're doing it. There's no changing of any pipe going on right now, so there's, there's no change of, of anything that's already there. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Just, just briefly, I just, as I, 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 I respect Mr. Bean and Mr. Griffin's <laughs> construction experience, but I also would like to state that the DPW is currently involved in construction and sewers. And I would think that their expertise would be a little higher than the expertise and of our two youthful construction workers. Duly noted. I, and I would yeah. I'd have to agree with Jim on that. And also, I have a because I know Rick made a motion with you know them signing whatever Mark thought appropriate. But then I was confused with what Phil said. We're still going to have an indemnification clause. That I would say not. yes. That's what okay. they asked for. Yeah. All right. The. Um, uh, now, I was going to ask Public Works, the line that's there, this is our line, not, it's not the, the, the property owners, correct? The main, the six inch line that runs parallel to Ocean Boulevard is, is property of the town, and the responsibility of the town. And they, what's, what's their responsibility? Their service line, their four inch connection to that line, however long it may be, to the main. Okay, 
So we have a motion. Uh, I'm a little confused because you said one thing and he said another. Well, I support his motion. I made a comment about the uh, hold harmless, but okay. Um, so we have was part of the we have a motion to allow it with the hold harmless agreement. Motion has been seconded. All those in favor? Opposed? So. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. We had to get one of you, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We, we uh, do appreciate that you gave it uh, thorough consideration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my clients ask, what a, what would be the response of DPW to moving it, moving the moving the pipe, moving the pipe over? Yeah. If if it could be moved right on the property line and the butter west doesn't have a uh, mind that it further encumbers their land more than it currently does, then we don't have an issue. Thank you. We'll try to work that out with you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have is Chris Jacobs and Jen Hale, Department Updates. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, we've been asked to provide a uh, quarterly update for the department. Um, even I was surprised when I sat, sat down and started putting together the notes. Uh, I came in, just entered the third page, so we have a little bit going on. Um, new hires, uh, we do have an, uh, an engineer that's starting. Um, he'll start on November 28th. This replaces Ryan uh, Flynn, who left over a year ago. Uh, we had not filled the position till, or started to fill it till this summer. And this gentleman uh, gave his word that he would complete the job that he's at now before he would start with us. And I'm pleased to find somebody that actually can give his word that he'll stay to a job and see it to its completion. Uh, we've also made an offer and have a start date for Stephen Vitale. He's going to fill a highway labor position that was vacated this uh, past September. And we have Joe Gallagher started as our vehicle uh, maintenance foreman in September. Um, I'm already seeing uh, uh, improvements in uh, turnover time, maybe cost reduction, doing things uh, a little more um, informed, if you will. He's brought, brought a great knowledge set to the job. And Michael Carell, Fletcher Cotto, David Jones, and Joshua Nersessian, uh, they've been with us uh, almost, well, a year, and all of them have been uh, made permanent uh, because they did complete their probationary status, period. Uh, we do have a number of major projects that we're currently uh, moving along. Mill Pond Dam, we actually had a uh, progress meeting with the engineer earlier today. And also, I want to say, um, let's see, Candy Stalmach was there, Kevin Grund, his wife was there, um, she, Mr. and Mrs. Metcalf, uh, Mr. Edgar, so the, the residents or the direct abutters, uh, we've uh, extended the uh, invitation back to that Mill Pond Dam Committee, and they've been involved in all of the uh, meetings to date. Uh, we still are on track uh, to have 50% drawings by the end of the year and on track to bid the project out somewhere between May or June uh, this, uh, of, of 17. This goes back to a uh, uh, Warren article from two meetings ago, two March meetings. Bicentennial Park, uh, we're looking for a draft uh, uh, 
findings uh, due, due to be delivered to the department by the end of the month. They've done uh, subsurface exploration. They've excavated behind the uh, existing head wall, looked at that. Church Street Force Main, the plans are at 60%. We had a meeting uh, three weeks ago with DOT out on 101 to determine whether they're going to let us hang the pipes off beside the bridge, under the bridge, or build our own bridge, where the fourth option would be to um, jack the, the force main underneath the marsh, underneath Tide Mill Creek. But uh, given what we've had for an experience here in the past, um, I'm not very uh, supportive of that fourth option. Also, it's a very expensive option. Um, so we're, we're on schedule to build this out. Uh, late this year uh, with the based and, and construct it next year based on funding being approved at the upcoming town meeting. That's a Warren article that will be before us collectively to discuss later on. Uh, our wastewater treatment plant facility study is underway. Uh, the engineering charge is working with waste staff to gather uh, uh, some information. It hasn't been revisited in almost 10 years, so there's a lot of uh, information gathering. We do have a progress meeting scheduled for next week. Uh, operations Manager Teresa, Teresa McGinnis is, oh, she's listening. Uh, <laughs> we have currently out uh, snow plowing bids, crack sealing bid, and spot herbicide bid. They're all due tomorrow. And um, we'll be coming back to the board hopefully by the 28th with uh, some recommendations on those bids and, and one other that's, that's outstanding. Uh, within the highway department, uh, carpenters are working on um, putting on a new roof on the sheds that are out behind our main building. Not a lot of people have probably seen those. Those are the sheds that were at the old town hall. Um, I won't say which members up here remember those sheds, but Fred's grinning. So <laughs> um, there was uh, they were starting to settle. We spent most of the summer actually uh, doing some support work inside. Uh, shoring up walls, uh, the roofs were actually sagging, and we brought that all back together, and uh, we put on new plywood on the roof, and they're about a quarter of the way through the new shingling job, so that should carry those sheds uh, well into the next 40 or 50 years. Um, we don't, um, I would say we, we have an attitude of not throwing away or discounting anything that we already have as an asset. We want to make, make sure that they... Uh, what the town gives us to work with, we maintain and keep going forward with. Leaf collection throughout the town will continue for the rest of the month and probably in the first week of December. Uh, there's been an, uh, the particular truck that we've used in the past for uh, breakdowns is uh, broken again. Um, but um, I have given Frank Swift a directive to uh, starting tomorrow to make a more concerted effort to getting more and more of the leaves off the uh, off the side of the road, I'm concerned that the, the bags are going to start to fall apart. Uh, the reason why they didn't do a lot of uh, leaf collection is they've been uh, milling and paving on Ann's Lane, and probably a number of people have noticed that. Um, the kind of operation we do allow Ann's Lane to hold together until uh, uh, next year, till we can get it uh, fully paved. Uh, tree removal has been very active this year. Um, I've maintained a list. We're up above 40 trees that we've actually removed. We have several more uh, to be removed on the list and over 40 trees for trimming specifically on Mill Road from where the water tower was down to High Street and recently identified Ridgeview. Uh, the whole length of it needs to have trees trimmed back. Trucks and buses and our plow trucks were, were catching some of the limbs. Um, as you're aware, new pavement was installed in Watson Lane, Landing Road, Driftwood, Maple, Forest, and Cedarview Lane, and we also identified a portion of Heritage Lane. Uh, it did not hold together last year. Matter of fact, unraveled is the term, and uh, it was added to the paving list. Um, we still have 376,000 remaining in that this year's Warren article. Uh, we're going to use a portion of it for crack sealing in the spring and the remainder for the other roads that are listed in the CIP. Um, we'll be able to actually get done more paving next year by starting earlier in the spring, not waiting till um, midsummer to actually get there and get it done. Um, we expect a new one-ton dump truck and plow to be delivered by the end of November. We have heard from the uh, 
the manufacturer and the uh, firm fitting out the truck. The two new heavy six-wheel dump trucks will be delivered by the end of the year. Uh, the chassis, i.e. tractor, truck portion has been delivered up to Maine. The plow, wing, box, and sanders are all being fitted out for that. One of the things I did ask Joe Gower to look at was um, in the last three, well, he went back five years, what has been the cost to maintain our transfer trailers, uh, the cost to maintain the rear load packer trucks, and then the cost to maintain the sidearm packers. Um, I actually asked him for the second two, and he included the trailers. Uh, it works out that it's uh, $89.39 per trailer per year, and that has to do with hoses, hydraulic hoses, greasing the skids. Um, they go through a number of tires uh, in a year, um, brakes. So, but they're, they're, they're it's worked out to, as I say, 8,900 for each trailer over the five years. By comparison, the rear load packers that we have, uh, we've spent and just under 108,000 maintaining them, all three of them over the last five years. Works up to $35,922 per packer over that five years. But the cost of the sidearm packers in that same period was 220,000, 200,000, 224, that works out to 66,741 per truck. Um, something that we need to consider in the future when we talk about replacing those is um, from an operational perspective, I think uh, we have to include or look at what the cost is to maintain those trucks. They're not uh, inexpensive at all to maintain. Um, there's a four letter word called snow that I wasn't really gonna talk about. Uh, we are ready if it if it if and when it does happen. Um, we've also done started something different in the sewer and drainage division. We've uh, starting to look at not just our sewer pipes, but also more of the drainage pipes. We did that with a video inspection of all the uh, drainage pipes in the area of Falcone Circle, St. Cyr, and Stowcroft streets. The idea is to take some of Toby's sewer and drainage maintenance money and actually line these metal pipes so that we don't have to dig the roads up and we don't have to replace them. It, it, is going to appear, it appears that it will be a less costly operation than, let's say, ripping up the road and, and replacing the pipes. Uh, just to give you some great numbers, uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, processed 64.2 million gallons last month versus 58.2 for the same period a year ago, or same month a year ago. Same thing with sludge, 284 tons of wet tons of sludge compared with 268 the same month uh, in 15. Uh, we use those to track, is, is our job growing? Is our, is the, is the need of the plan or is the town growing? And these, along with trash, is one of the markers that shows us that yes, there's definitely growth occurring within the town. Uh, same uh, going on to the transfer station, we look at monthly on those numbers. Um, October this month was 26, we're 26 tons higher uh, year to date than uh, we were a year ago. But recycling is we're six tons lower than we were a year to date. It means uh, we're getting a little bit more trash and a little less recycling, but don't jump to the conclusion that recycling is down totally because it, it tends to, it's higher during the um, peak months of, let's say, June, July, August, and then it's, we, we have a taper off, but we'll end up settling back in. And I think we're on, I looked at the numbers today, we're on track to still be at 30%, which is what we've been for the last 10 years. Um, Mark's been very... Um, open to suggestions and we had a problem last year with managing tires they were they were all over the yard that's no longer the situation they're in a, uh, their own container so that uh, we comply with not only town rules but state rules uh, all the brush was chipped in the last two weeks there was a probably a two acre pile out there now it's a 50 foot square um, pile from just chip and the we did receive all our additional rec refuse and recycling containers back in September. So we're back to handing out more or replacing the ones that get damaged. Questions? So 
Um, just looking at some of these comparisons from last year to this year, wastewater treatment operations, that's just for the month of October. I just compared the month and the sum total up to that point. So, okay, so total. I mean, everything's increased by a, you know, a uh, material amount, so. Yeah, it's ticking up 2% a year. So I would say, yeah, your job is uh, increasing. Yep. Trash is increasing, recycling. Trash and wastewater. And wastewater and sludge and all that good stuff because yep. we have more development and we're probably going to continue to have more development. Right. So we're advancing and everything is getting more and more. Jennifer. Yeah, um, Mill Pond Dam. Not you might not be able to answer, it, but is, are you finding what you expected to find, or are, you, are there any surprises? Are there any no surprises? They did borings through it. The first uh, five to six feet down was typical clay and rock that people use to build dams with. Below that, they found glacial till, probably five to six feet of it on average, meaning that that's the material that's allowing all the water to seep in under that uh, dam and keep the ground around it wet. And very shortly under that, within the 10 to 12 foot depth range, they found ledge. So um, <clears throat> those are really that's really good news as far as the dam design people are concerned. It, it limits our vertical exposure, cost exposure, uh, and they're moving right forward with the, with the design. Super, super. On the trucks, when you say the sidearm packers cost more to maintain, do they save money, though, in efficiency? Or is there a correlation that can be drawn there? there there's, there's a cutoff point, and that, that is part of the study that I've undertaken. When we last looked at them, they did about 75 to 80 containers per hour, where, and I don't remember exactly what the, the rear packers picked up, but they were in the 50 to 60. In other words, they were slower. So the question comes out, is it worth the additional maintenance cost for those, the additional containers that it would pick up per hour? And where, where that has to be balanced is if you have to look at what it would cost for, for labor to, to offset that. But the reason why I had him do this is was part of the, the, the solid waste study that I'm looking to update, but also to look back at when we made the decision five years ago to go at this process, did we accurately take into account maintenance of the trailers, maintenance of the packer trucks, the wear and tear and, and the depreciation to replace them every five years or seven or nine years, whatever it's going to work out to. But, um, yeah, we've been, uh, been, the department's been hit hard the last four to five years with the maintenance of those trucks. Uh, it just. The last three weeks alone, I yeah. probably totaled almost fifteen twenty thousand mm. dollars $20,000. And just one other question, when you talk about the wastewater treatment op operations, uh, people would always interested, you know, we're, we're growing and stuff, capacity. Our assigned capacity is over 4 million gallons a day. Right now, we're averaging, and if you look at the, the number that they gave me, we're averaging two. So we're at 50, 60% of capacity. But as we approach 3.8 million gallons, then then we're we're maxed out. Our daily average for the whole year is only 2 mgd, but it's the July 4th weekend, the Memorial Day weekend, um, Labor Day that kick us up and sometimes over really what our permitted limit is, and that's that's how we're judged or, or held accountable at the state level. Right. So we're keeping a very close eye on that and very it, close. In, in looking to the future and planning for the future. Well, that's that's why the the other part of the CIP looks at a lot of sewer replacement in an, in an effort to reduce infiltration. If I can reduce infiltration, I'm buying us back capacity and time. Very good. Thank you very much, Rick. <clears throat> well, the reason we went to the Packers to begin with, the side Packers, was to cut down on. Uh, the people being injured and being out on disability, workman's comp, and it was a lot, probably a lot more money than what the uh, correcting these machines. I question whether people are using them right if there's this much of a problem with them. And I just want to point out that I don't remember any time when we were buying any trucks that only lasted five years. Um, 
Hampton has a history of using them a lot more than five years, probably more than ten years. Yep. And <clears throat> I don't. I don't. I would just would question why they have this breakdown ability. Did you were the wrong tr um, trucks ordered to begin with, or are they not being fixed correctly, or what? You know, are they not being used correctly? Um, and again, you know, adding a lot of other people. We were so relieved to get away from those rear, rear packers at one point that I can't imagine we're going to just do a 360. But, you know, more employees, more disability, more uh, workman's comp, it's, I don't think it's a good thing. Okay. I'll, thank you for that update. I'll, I'll look into that as part of the study. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Great department. Uh, your new hires, congratulate all of them. Uh, it's uh, a really great place to work and uh, some great careers down there. So for all your folks down there uh, that are on board, congratulations. The Bicentennial Park, the park uh, report is coming out soon. I know that uh, all of us here are concerned about uh, uh, risk management. I'm concerned about that wall. I'm concerned about the uh, floods. I don't know what's below uh, that vertical. And uh, um, I would uh, anticipate an expeditious response to this request um, about the structural uh, uh, integrity of that. And uh, I look forward to a report on that sooner than a month. It, a it will be. They've got the preliminary okay, update you can, today. You can address so that concern. That's our park. That's our wall. It's been there a long time. Uh, the weather's changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm concerned about uh, the safety of folks down there because that's uh, a little long in the tooth. And if we could uh, expedite that as soon as this week, that would be great just to address the structural integrity of that massive vertical wall down there. Yep. Um, that was a salient in the report. Uh, vehicle maintenance, that's always important. I'm glad you've got uh, a new, new guy in the job. And that's going well, you say? Yes, very well. Great. Wonderful. The uh, wastewater treatment um, percentage up 10%. Um, I know that uh, we all have our opinions, but that could be weather. Uh, it could be, uh, you know, any number of things. But a 10% increase, was it up 10% from uh, a flat level two years ago? Do you have any idea? I do have those numbers on my desk. I okay. Did not. Just wondering, because that's, that's a pretty substantial jump, and is a, a local guy. I'm just wondering if it's weather, uh, blah, 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 blah. But great report, and thank you very much for your uh, DPW projects report that's that's very concise it's a nice uh, it's a nice chart and uh, we thank you for coming in thank you thank you mr chairman thank you uh good report in fact it's good to hear that you got four guys that you just got off probation i've met most of them there they seem like really nice guys they yep. seem like they're doing an excellent job uh you talked about the trees are we replacing any trees i haven't ordered any yet um basically my plan was to uh, determine types, locations, and then bid it as a package so that, you know, I was putting in 15 trees or 20 trees using the same account. Uh, the same tree, it's actually a tree maintenance account. So I'm discussing it with Fred, Jamie, and I think Mr. Griffin also <coughs> counted that it could be used for rebeautifying the town. And as far as the Packers, I know you guys have recently had a lot of problems with them. They're, what, five, six years old now? Um, yeah, that, they they came in the first year I came in, so they've been here five years. They're not, I mean, they're, they're internationals, but they're not a heavy-duty chassis. Well, the problems are, um, are multi-faceted. Like, for instance, two of the trucks, this, the big pump that's mounted on the front end, frame went uh, to one of those same trucks and another truck they've been through the joystick that runs the, the sidearm that the operators use two thousand dollars a piece uh, we've gone through two of them and, um, the uh, they were ordered or had installed automatic lubrication systems so you didn't have to go around with a grease gun once a week they forgot about that it gets cold so in January, the first year, they all snapped. All the little plastic lines just, one, the grease didn't move through them, and secondly, they all just popped. So we're back to manually greasing those. 
Um, as far as the engines go, all three of them have had to have an engine job uh, for the emissions regeneration. Uh, for people that are not aware, uh, there's a system on the truck where it actually takes back in the exhaust and reburns part of the unburnt. What you normally used to see is uh, diesel exhaust at, get at, actually gets run back through the engines. Uh, those, all three of the trucks have had that rebuilt, $6,000 a pop. Uh, that probably goes to the type of truck it is um, or in the year. They were when we got it, they are 2007 production trucks. We acquired them in 2011. Um, what that has to do with it, I don't know. Maybe nothing. But definitely we, we're finding that in, since 2007 the technology has changed and improved. Um, when we brought them over to Seabrook truck, they were like, ah, 2007s, huh? Hmm. Uh, only because they knew that it was a track record of what they'd seen. So it isn't like we bought a lemon. It just happened to be that that's something that all those 2007 trucks eventually needed. And then they go through front tires, uh, like no tomorrow. Uh, it has to do with all the, it's the stop and go and the short short, sharp turns that we're making on all the side streets. In other words, the frames were set up to do 50-mile hauls, but the, the turning, it just eats up the tires, the front tires particularly. And I know we have pickups on both sides of them. With the exception of the, the leaded streets down the beach, do we... Do we need that, or can we get can we get? Well, that's one of the things that I'd hope to answer in the, the the salt waste study is to basically do a root analysis and, and and order these trucks with only hopefully with arms only on one side because it's very expensive okay. having the arms on both sides. Um, we've looked at now three different vendors, and every one of them is you, we can give you the second arm, but you're better off with with just an arm on one side. And, most of the and that would be just for us to do is is discuss parking and everything else down the beach mm -hmm. yep. on, on one side of the street so that we could have all the cans on one side. Exactly. And it would also give us the ability to clean them to the street. Yep. So. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. thing we have is Jason Bashad, Architectural and Site Design Guidelines Grant. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So, Jason Bashan, Town Planner. I have Brendan McNamara, the uh, Planning Board Chairman, with me, and I'm here this evening to talk with you about the Architectural and Site Designs Guideline Grant that we were recently awarded and to uh, request your authorization to have the town manager sign the contract, which I believe you've all received. Um, so just a little summary, um, earlier this year, the planning board started discussing the topic of architectural and site design guidelines and asked that I look into how we might incorporate these into what we do and also what other communities are doing. So I looked into that, conducted that research and reported back to the board on that. Um, this summer, a grant opportunity came about um, through the Rockingham Planning Commission. Um, it was for a planning assistance grant, and we had to determine what use we would want to use for that planning assistance grant that seemed like the ideal use to do that. Um, I'm happy to say that we were awarded that grant um, for the purpose of preparing the architectural and site design guidelines. Um, the planning board in their discussions would like these guidelines to be related to commercial and industrial development, not it wouldn't apply to say residential home single family or multifamily residential home it would be more for commercial and industrial and they would actually like to incorporate it as an appendix to the site plan regulations so it would be guidelines not standards but as an appendix to the our regulations and flexibility for applicants i ensure you will be pre preserved that's something that the board was very uh, concerned about and interested in uh, incorporating um, I'll go over briefly the, uh, the scope of the services that's in the uh, contract um, as the Rockingham Planning Commission had laid out um, along with uh, input from planning board members. Um, the first task would be to work with myself and the board to oversee the preparation of those guidelines. Up to six meetings will be held with, the, with myself and the planning board in that preparation. 
Um, task two would be to prepare the guidelines um, for possible inclusion into, the, as I noted, the site plan review regulations, um, focusing on those two areas, commercial and industrial development. The three elements that will be looked at are architectural building design to ensure um, traditional New England forms, materials, and scale. Uh, landscaping, looking at the sites, the parking areas, to incorporate some level of reasonable level, of course, of landscaping um, through the integration of that into the parking areas um, for a more cohesive design, and signage and how that could be incorporated in there into those as well. Um, the Rocking and Planning Commission will prepare uh, text descriptions and graf graphical depictions to illustrate the alternative design guidelines. Um, the staff from the Rocking and Planning Commission will assist me in presenting those. We'll have at least one public information meeting. This will be an open public process, and the public will have an opportunity to comment before the board would ever decide to uh, to adopt these. And they'll provide their, their work in electronic form, in Word format for us. With regard to funding for the project, um, the Rocking and Planning Commission is funding $2,500 of the project through a targeted block grant from the New Hampshire Office of Energy and Planning. Our local, we require a local match, or they require a local match. Um, we are proposing to provide a $3,500 local match that is fully covered under our budget, under contracted services and dues in the line item for 2016. We have the funds for that. We have that ready to go. Um, and as I noted, a copy of the contract is provided to you. Um, work is anticipated to, to start upon full execution of the agreement and would be completed no later than May 31st of 2017. So that's a summary of the project, and I'd be happy to respond to any questions any of you may have. Chris, why don't we with Phil? No questions, thank you. Rick? No, it sounds good. Uh, being the selectman's representative on the planning board, I've been well aware of this, and they do a super job, and I support anything the planning board does. And so does selectman uh, Waddell as well. Thank you. Just to let you know. And Rusty, when he has to sit in for it. <laughs> I agree with everyone else. I think it's a good idea. So. And it should be noted that the the, um, the part that this town is matched is already part of the planning board's budget, so we're not asking for additional funding from the town. It's part of our budget. Alrighty, so we need a motion to Make that motion that we go accept. On. We matching. Yep. We'll sign I'll authorize the sound right. town manager to sign it. Second. It. Yep. Second. All those in favor? <coughs> Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next one is Warren Kelly, condominium trash pickup. Is Warren Kelly here? Oh, there he is. Warren Kelly, right here. Good evening, I'm Warren Kelly. Um, I'm a developer down and a resident down at 377 Ocean Boulevard. Boulevard. First of all, I want to thank the board for allowing me to appear in front of you on this, on the position of trash um, approval for condominiums. Okay. I would also like to state to the board that as a taxpayer, I'm here tonight respectfully to question the grounds for which the current <coughs> town of Hampton policy, it denies condominium owners the same public services, <coughs> excuse me, to provide it to homeowners, businesses, and condominium projects with five <clears throat> units or less, when they're all required to pay the same tax rate. I'd like to state a few things about the project we did at 377. <clears throat> when I purchased the, the empty lot at 377 Ocean, we were paying the town approximately 22000 a year. I invested over $9 million and created jobs, brought new people to the town, which the residents are now paying upwards to $260,000 annually in property tax. That's an increase to the town of <clears throat> almost $240,000 in revenue every year. I would also note that each condominium also paid an impact tax fee to assist in any future financial needs the town may incur due to growth. 90% of the owners at 377 a seasonal, reducing the cost of services from <clears throat> to the town dramatically versus year-round residents in a single-family home. 100% of the current owners who 
of Ocean Boulevard, have no children in the Hampton school system, and most of the condominiums were designed so they would not be and are not attractive to host households with children. They're either single bedroom or two bedroom units. 377 is 100% residential with no business on the property. In my design, I <coughs> chose not to put any type of businesses which would give me additional revenue. We went all residential. The town of Hampton picks up all the trash currently for for-profit businesses. And also there is no need, to me the key thing is no need for town trucks to enter private property to pick up the trash at 377. Therefore, there's no increase in liability to the town. 377 has 100 feet of sidewalk frontage right here, which is about eight feet wide, to accommodate trash barrels for trash pickup. Same as everybody else. Actually, it has more space than most of the residents on Ocean Boulevard. To put it in comparison, if you had 26 homes, single-family homes, they'd be picking up 52 barrels every week. We're not even going to be half of that, which would result or would translate to a 50% savings to the town in regard to if I had turned this into either 50 apartments or 50 single-family homes, or 26, excuse me. It was half the trash. Condominium owners at 377 Ocean Boulevard, again, they pay the same tax rate as homeowners, businesses, and condominium projects and apartment buildings with less than five units, yet they, all the other people, all the other structures enjoy tax uh, rubbish pickup. In conclusion, I, I have to respectfully ask, how can the board conclude that if a person <coughs> buys a single home in Hampton, their taxes paid will qualify for trash removal, yet if another person buys a new condominium, and most likely with no children or lesser impact, their taxes do not qualify for trash pickup. To keep it simple, I'm simply asking that the board allows the residents of 377 Ocean Boulevard the same benefit of trash removal as you do all the other taxpayers in single family homes, businesses, apartments, and quite frankly, uh, all the condos with five, you voted five or less units, and currently, of course, there's several condominiums that enjoy it. And again, I think the key here is that in no way does the town trucks have to enter any private property. We're simply asking that our taxes and the increase in taxes of the revenue that we've allowed the town to just pick our trash up on the public road exactly the same way as you're picking all of our neighbors' trash up. Thank you, Liz. Any questions? Phil? Uh, it's hard to uh, dispute your logic, Mr. Kelly. And uh, the, uh, I would, uh, of course, defer to the town manager, town esquire is here, to address the foundation for this phenomenon as it relates to the planning process, as it relates to approvals, and what is, what is uh, promised, what is given. In this particular case, um, Mr. Kelly uh, went to the planning board and filed for condominium construction on Ocean Boulevard. As a part of that filing, there was a covenant that was applied, which the planning board accepted, uh, that trash pickup would be the private uh, prerogative uh, and obligation of the property, not the town. And we're operating under that. It's, it's, it's recorded in the registry of deeds. It's in the documents. Uh, it's a requirement until such time as he goes back to the planning board <coughs> and the planning board sees fit to remove that requirement and the documents are refiled in the registry of deeds with changes. And you're currently, uh, just for informational purposes, Mr. Kelly, you're going through each and every condominium Every one, yes, we are. We're, we're looking at every single one. Uh, what we have found is that uh, basically all the larger condominiums in town uh, have their own individual trash collection, which they pay for, uh, with the exception of whether, if there is a commercial building 
or office uh, of some kind on the first floor, this de designated commercial and planning board exempted them from the requirements that the, uh, they must do private tr trash collection. That's done by the public. In that, that case, I would defer to the uh, planning board representative. I'll be glad to say though. something. Um, <clears throat> in the past, I have taken the, um, you know, I've tried to, um, and because this has been going on for 12 years, it's not like it's anything new. I've t fought for the position of picking up the trash on Ocean Boulevard. This board has decided over and over and over again that it's five units. And I don't really see why we're, we would change it. It wouldn't be fair to any of the other unless we're going to pick up every condominium, and I don't think that that's something this board is probably going to do. So I don't really see how we can change it. We, as what was it last year, Rusty, that this was decided that this was the line that we were going to hold. Yep. yep and I, I really don't see how we can change it. I sympathize with it. I've taken your position over and over again, and it's I've never yet been able to get it to stick. So I don't really see how we could change it tonight. I concur with Rick, and also if that was what was agreed upon by the planning board in the initial stages. And every I mean, condominium all over the place, they don't, towns don't pick right. up big condominiums anywhere. May I interject at all? Sure. Okay, well, a couple of things I'd like to address. Number one, the um, fact that we approved the planning board's stipulation understand this was a two-year permitting process which I think you're all aware of um, yep. this obviously was the trash pickup was not on the top of the radar when you're doing a project of this size number one also we were led to believe that this was a town rule okay so it wasn't a, a thing and, and it wasn't until after we developed it and we looked at the under I looked at the town and how this was developed that it was brought up um, or came to my attention, and I quite frankly, I feel is I don't understand the basis for it. The fact that you've had it for 5, 10, 15 years still does not make it right. The overwhelming fact here is what is the basis? If we're paying the same amount of tax as the person next to us, okay, why should we be deprived of the same benefits? That's number one. Number two, I have to, again, respectfully disagree with your comments that every major one is doing it. Now, the ones that were developed on Ocean Boulevard with retail, it's a different situation. There's no place to put trash barrels. Uh, I know the developer well. The developer understood that. He also chose to put retail. So therefore, he's, he's got the income from retail. They're taking that space up, which we have in front of our building. All right? So they then chose to have private. That's a business decision, which I respect. The rest of the large developers, and I've talked to them all, and I'm not going to name names, but I'll tell you they're all on the same page with me. They do not, and I, I'm sure someone in this town is aware of the last few uh, developments that came up. They're not happy. They've attempted to get trash pickup. And quite frankly, I'm not going to argue their case, but I also disagree that if you can put your barrels out on the street, as every other resident does, how can, seriously, how can this board say that these people paying $260,000, which is an additional income for this town, that we provide of $240,000, how can you say that for $240,000 additional revenue, you can't pick up our trash? There's no safety issue. There's no, the logic doesn't make sense. All you're saying is, if I buy a house or I build five or less condos, you'll take my tax money and you'll give me five <coughs> benefits. If I buy a condo, for X amount of dollars, but there's six condos or 10 condos, I'm gonna pay the same taxes, but you're only gonna give me four benefits. Where is the logic there? And that's that's why I'm here tonight. I'm, I'm here because it really is, it doesn't make sense and it's certainly not right to the taxpayer. And quite frankly, these people, and you all know the beach, they're only here seasonally in the summer. The impact on the town is minor compared to the revenue the town is getting. Then the argument was given to me, well, schools. Well, we're not in the school system, but even if we were, we paid the impact fee. Say I built houses in Hampton. The homeowner pays an impact fee. The condominium owner pays an impact fee. So again, how, where does the double standard come that I pay a $5,000 impact fee, but I'm still deprived of the benefits that my neighbor gets because 
they happen to be in a condo with only five units. I see no logic. I don't understand the solid footing or grounding for that. And I'm, I'm just asking the board to please reconsider for the, for the taxpayers and the condo owners. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah, number one, I was not on the planning board when this came before. And, and number two, and I, wouldn't, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt to speak for the planning board. So, but, and number three, full disclosure, I live in a condominium. And philosophically, I agree 800% with what you're saying, Warren. That, I mean, it, it, it always, we pay for ours to be picked up. We have a, a, a dumpster, and it always kills me because I'm thinking that there's not a kid in the in the building that goes to the school, so you're not you're not taking any of that money away. There's not you're paying the exact same taxes, more taxes because you live down the beach, but that's fine. You you elect to live down there, and and you're not getting the same services that other people. You're not adding more trash than a single family home. You're probably adding less trash than a single single family home. But philosophically, I. I, I voted for the five, and I, I really resent, uh, regret that I did that because philosophically I can't agree with it. Yeah, I was on the planning board when it was approved, and when I tell you I took your position and went with it then, for you, then, and your group agreed to take the trash away because I did agree with it. And I've agreed with it all along Ocean Boulevard, and I've seen the condos one after another. There's a few condos that would like to have the recycling picked up, but almost none of them expect their trash to be picked up. And so the ones that we get that come here, it's almost always the recycling that they come here for because it's a, st it's a town law that we have recycling, and that's why they feel that they should have the recycling. And I totally have agreed with it. But not just for, uh, for your group, or whatever, over and over again, I tried, when I was on the planning board for five years, if it was on Ocean Boulevard or another main road where the people could bring the, um, the uh, carts out, I was all for it, but nobody else was. They were not out for it at the planning board, and every time I saw the developers agree to, to the concessions so that they could build the condos, and that's what you did too. You have to understand, when you say agree, you're being bombarded with 700 regulations by the town. You're battling development. The last thing you're thinking about is trash. So let's, let's and also, we're, being told, to we're also it. being given misinformation. We're being told that this is the way it has to be. And until we sit back and examine the rationale, and so in conclusion, I just have to ask you, if that's the way you feel, somebody justify to me the reason that I would pay the same tax as my neighbor on Ocean Boulevard, yet my neighbor on Ocean Boulevard has his trash picked up every week, but I'm being denied the same right. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past, and things, votes can be changed. The, rea the reality is, you know, I, I really can't, and I think we all grew up the same way, just because everybody's doing it doesn't make it right. So here's where I'm saying, tell me the rationale that you'll take. I think we a should move this along. You may, know, may, I, I may totally. I, may, I, may I have a couple of comments, please? Because sure. it, it, it does speak to the essence of uh, equity and fairness. And uh, it's not just this condominium. And we've had other people come in. And I know, Mr. Kelly, that you understand that uh, um, you are bombarded. And we understand uh, local regulations, state local regulations, and federal regulations are encumbering you want to build a building and people want to live at the beach and they pay good money and they're good people. And then there are documents that are filed with the state and they say that you're going to take care of your trash. And now that is problematic. We have a, and I used to work on a garbage truck as a kid in town. Um, and it was a good job. It was a real good job. Um, we have a, a, a park on the Kings Highway and they pay us hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and they're only here for the summertime. And we used to pick that up because I used to go there and pick it up as a kid. And now we don't do that. Is that correct? That's correct. So we don't do that. And they were in here a couple of years ago with the same argument. Now moving the ball forward, we can't um, um, make a decision on any one specific condominium because these are recorded deeds and there are agreements between the planning board and you and they're recorded and it says in the rule of law we're not going to do it. But going forward, which I think is why you're here, uh, he, Mr. Welch had mentioned going back to the planning board and having this statement. 
And then, Mr. Welch, if you could speak to the efficacy and utility of uh, the Warren article process, which is now in season, <clears throat> that you and others could draft a Warren article, uh, perhaps, and Mr. Welch and the town esquire is here, uh, and it'll come up in March, if that would be a venue for these folks with this phenomenon to pursue. It's always a venue. No one can deny the requirements of RSA 39 as a venue to bring an issue to the town meeting for decision. The problem you're going to have <clears throat> is that if you bring that to the town meeting for a decision, you're going to have to pick up all the condominiums in town. You can't just say we're only going to pick up certain ones. You're going to pick them all up, which I think is what you're arguing. Um, if you do that, I'm probably going to give you a bill for slightly more than a million dollars to get it done for a number of reasons. Uh, we have a lot of condominiums in town that have rather large uh, dumpsters and, and uh, roll-off boxes and so on and so forth. We'll have to buy special equipment to pick those up. Dumpster boxes that are picked up that are the size of the ones that are being used in condominiums in town, <clears throat> that's going to cost you between somewhere between three hundred and fifty and four hundred and fifty thousand dollars per truck, not including the dumpsters. Don't ask you to pick up dumpsters. Well, no, they're there. Okay, <clears throat> the problem is that they don't have sidewalks. There's no place for them to put the carts, and in many cases, we would actually physically have to drive on the property to pick up. The and then you carts. should say no. I agree well, with you. But that's not the point. The point is that you 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 want them picked up, and and I understand the reason. Okay? I don't want them picked up. Well, that's your argument. The, the, the I don't condominium want shouldn't be discriminated against, and they should be picked up. No, you're not hearing my argument. My argument is if we have a sidewalk, if you have to go on any, if you have to put one tire on private property, I agree with the board 100%. Do not pick the trash up. It's now private. I'm not arguing that at all, sir, at all. I'm arguing all things being equal, it's a road, and I'm equal to other people on the road. I do not. If you have to go I, on I private property, you should. I don't agree. Do your development is equal to other other well, businesses. I don't understand. He wa so we were just going to supposedly pick these condos up and no one else's. I yeah. mean, you can't do right. that. That's, That's what not, he's asking for. Our policies already says that we're not going to do it. And just because that you have access to the road, we can't just say we're going to agree to pick your condos up, and then everyone else, what well, they're going to come in and do the same thing. Right. No, and the thing is, like I told you, over, you know, I have gone to bat to for do this over and over again when I was on the planning board, and every time the developers, because they were afraid of being turned down, they said they're going to pick up the trash. I'm pretty sure here included. Um, I just don't see how we can change it. We've come up with a policy. I thought we were going to stand by it. It was just recently this last year. Mm -hmm. Haven't been 12 months, haven't gone by, yeah. and I don't see how we can change it without having some massive hearings again, like we've done over and over again. And I think we've come to an answer that's fair. And, you, you know, I don't see how you agree to it if you don't want it to happen this way. The big problem here is that it's in your condo docs. They recorded the registry of deeds. It's a mandatory obligation against you. The town under the statute has no legal obligation to pick up trash at all. That's a matter for the town meeting to appropriate money for the Public Works Department to do that work. All that the law says is we have to provide a place for the trash to go. That's all it says. But the town has decided to appropriate funds to do certain things. And one of them is to not pick up condominiums because there's a requirement in your deeds that we can't do it. I can change that. I've already checked from the legal standpoint that the condominium docs can be changed and that is not an issue. I could have those changed. It can be changed more. only by the planning board because there's a requirement that was put on there. So You've got to I, come back to public hearings and go through that process again. Can I go back to the planning board? You, you always have that right to go back to the planning board. And if the planning board approves it, then... And if the selectmen approve it? Then I have to come back to the selectmen after the planning board. Yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll get together as, as two boards and they'll have to approve it because this changes the policy of the town. I, again, I'm, I'm asking, which I... I honestly still haven't heard. Where did the policy come from, and why is the policy different for a condo owner? That's all I'm asking. All, with all conditions being the same, Be forget the dumpsters. Because that was a decision that was made 10, 12, 15 years ago, as condominiums started to be built in town. That was a decision that was made, and each, each condominium owner was asked, or developer, I should say, was asked to put this requirement in there. If they didn't put it in there and the town didn't agree to it, then your trash was picked up. And there are condominiums in town that we do pick up. There's no question about that. I built other condominiums. I was not asked that. I and mean, I wasn't really asked. This was, we have to understand, this is not an asked 
question. This is a requirement to get your permit to build. It's and a lot different than being asked, would you mind, if I was asked, would you mind picking up your own trash? My answer would have been, no, not if I, I would with a tax break. I was not asked, and, and no developer was asked. And he I agreed to, I, 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 That's I, the think, problem. I think the conversation that you and I had was, if you didn't put that in there, you wouldn't have got your condominium, and that was your belief, okay? Exactly. I and mean, and, no and I don't I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true at all. You know it's a requirement of the town. It has been a requirement of the town for 15 years. The planning board has honored that requirement. You could have said no because you had to approve those documents, and so did your legal people. Excuse me. I built condos, and it wasn't a requirement. To my knowledge, it wasn't a requirement a few years ago. And they have approved. There are plenty. I, whatever. I, my bottom line is I feel it's, it's, it's not right. We I don't understand that. where it's justified, and I don't know where it came from, and I'm, I'm just asking the board for the rationale. I have no other, you know, just the rationale of why. It's been a battle that's been fought for 12 years, and I've been on your side. So why and don't it's we never, fight it's why never, don't we? it's never flown yet. I don't think it's going to flow tonight either. Okay. So I make a motion to not allow it. I'll second it. All of we just lost one of us left. <laughs> I mean, I wish it would, but it's it just isn't going to be that way. Yeah. It's not fair to anybody else. Hampton Meadows, it, every time the people have agreed to it, to get the ability to build the condos. Thanks. Mm -hmm. We have a motion and a second to not allow it. All those in favor? Those opposed? 2-1, one, one abstention. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, today is the first day that petition warrant articles can be submitted for amendments to the town zoning ordinance. The filing period expires at 5 p.m. on December 14th. Those articles should be filed incidentally with the selectman's office by statute. Um, we're, we are accepting petitions for regular warrant articles. Uh, and they may be filed until 5 p.m. on January 10th, 2017, in the Selectman's Office. Letters were sent out to the United States Senators regarding the request for the appropriation of funds for the Corps of Engineers to dredge the harbor as previously uh, directed by the Board of Selectmen. Those have been sent out and delivered to the individual United States Senators in their offices. The ban on overnight parking on all streets in Hampton go goes into effect tomorrow. No parking on any street from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. until March 15th. As reported to the Department of Public Works, the flood grade on Brown Avenue and Highland Avenue has been repaired and is now in proper working order and operation. Uh, we've been, we have not been, if you've not licensed your dogs for 2016, please do so. Your fines and penalties continue to increase. And as was explained earlier uh, this evening, uh, we did receive a, uh, an early warning from the United States Weather Service that in fact there will be flooding tomorrow and the day following because of very high tides coming into the town. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for the town manager? Mr. Manager, I have a question on the um, overnight, the, the winter uh, van parking, overnight yes. parking. Yep. Some of the uh, residents down the beach said that they used to, the police department or public works or whomever used to put notices on their cars to remind people starting a certain day not to leave their streets on the side of uh, the road. Their cars on the side of the street. Yeah. 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 The streets <laughs> yeah. on the side. I wish we could leave our streets well, on the side sometimes. Right. Uh, <laughs> cars on the side of the road. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, as the police department uh, has been able to in the past, they have in fact left those notices. It usually starts after the 15th for people who refuse to remove their cars. Um, and some of those are just new residents. But I think after all the years this has been an operation, everybody sort of knows they've got to do that. Uh, if they have to wait for the uh, police to, to leave them a notice, then that's probably, it may be a ticket. I don't okay, want them so to get a ticket not going to happen then well i'm not sure i mean tomorrow, obviously they have the to uh, have personnel and time to do it so okay um and public works doesn't have those people either so um they usually do not give a ticket for the first offense they leave a notice okay and people park 
Uh, but if they see them again, they probably will get a ticket. We don't want them to do that. Okay. So, and I, I saw tonight that uh, the state has taken down all of their ticket venues all along Ocean Boulevard. So all that area there is open for, for parking 24 hours a day at this point at no cost. So if someone is having a problem finding a parking space, and some folks do, because there just isn't a parking space on the particular property they rent, my advice would be to take it up to Ocean Boulevard and park it in the state parking. Okay. However, they don't plow in the wintertime there, so right, yes. that, yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> we'll invite them to our parking lots in the wintertime so they can get plowed on a snow emergency. Have we, um, I have a question, the Sorry. legal cars in the municipal lot uptown? The police department's working on that. Uh, we have sent them a revision to the ordinance because uh, there's no provision in there right now that if your car is licensed but not inspected, you can park it there forever. Uh, I don't know how you got it there because if it's not inspected, you can't operate it on the roads. Uh, and technically, that's a road. So um, we are, we've sent a, a, a a series of amendments to the Chief of Police for review, and you'll probably be receiving them within a week or so. Right, but as of tomorrow? As of right now, they can't tow them. Okay, but there's no overnight parking when there's snow emergencies, right? Except in the uptown parking lot and the 24-hour parking area. Okay. Okay, and that, what's happening is people are putting cars in there that are technically abandoned. Yeah. Uh, they're not inspected. They can't operate on the roads. Uh, they don't have a, some of them, well, most of them do have a, a, a town parking permit to park there. Uh, but if you have a car that's not able to be driven on public property, it's kind of a, it's a catch-22 situation. Yeah. So uh, the chief has recommended that we take care of that with some amendments. Those have gone to him for approval, and I think you'll be seeing those shortly. Could, could we make an amendment so that those spaces are left open one night? A week. That's in the allow, amendments we're proposing to him to so allow that, cleaning yeah, of the would, parking lot so that <clears throat> vehicles can't park there on that one night a week. The, in, the intention was to to accomplish that within the amendments by providing the parking lots. So the area for that parking is extremely long, and one half of it is almost always empty. So what we had intended to do was to move the cars for a 15-day period from one area to the next and ban parking in the 15-day period in the first area. So we can clean that area out and keep it clean, get all the brush cut, all the, the, the grass mowed and all the trash picked up, and then they can move back and we'll do the same on the, the other end and do that every month. So the cars at least have to be moved twice a month. Right now they sit there sometimes for 12 months without being moved. I'd rather see it one day a week, quite frankly. I think uh, if, you know, if we had the ability to clean it, be less convenient once a week if they had to go and uh, figure out what to do with their car. Yeah, right. <clears throat> we could do that. Uh, it means that we'll have to uh, cut short the, the the cleaning we're doing at the beach because obviously the machine will have to go up there one day a week and do that. So, but we can do it. So, just something we so that we, we can have it so we're not having vehicles left there for months and on end. Oh yeah, which they shouldn't be. Some of them never move. Yes. Years, years on end. Some of them been there for a couple years. Yeah, there's a certain Mustang that's been up there for five years. Okay. Yeah, five years. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions, Rick? No, I I don't see why they're able to stay there overnight like that. We're, we're trying to. Well, you you provided a 24-hour parking space for people who live in apartments uptown that have no parking, absolutely none. Uh, this was sort of a safety valve. And I think all it was saying is that they need to be moved on a regular basis so we can I clean agree. and maintain. Phil? Nothing, sir. Okay. Anything under old business? Under new business, we have the SAU's 90s. Old business, I'd just oh. like to okay. just very briefly bring up that, that we finished with our budget process. The budget process has now gone to the budget committee. It's online. And I would just encourage voters and taxpayers to take a look at the budget and take a look at line by line what's going on with the budget so that they know intelligently what's happening so when they watch a, a, a budget committee meeting or any meeting that, that they, they understand what they're talking about and they understand that there are drivers 
in the budget that have raised the budget. And if you right. look at it closely, being retirement, insurance, police, fire, and DPW, and we're 15,000 population town with 100,000 in the summer some, periodically, mm -hmm. and that there's reasons why those are driven like that. And it's a reason and that, that voters become more in tune with that and more in tune with speaking to our state representatives about getting more equitable. And I know this has been going on for years and years and years, reimbursement for the town for all the tourists that we take care of. And I just, just be more intelligent on the budget process for the voters. I might add to that that if voters have questions as they review the budget, call the department in question and ask. Right. Talk to the department head and ask. Because we're more than willing to explain the uh, answers to the questions and explain why things are the way they are. Thank you. Anything else in old business? <laughs> Seeing none, new business. <laughs> SAEU 90's request for the cable funding of $66,823.79. And it just so happens that we have the lovely superintendent here with us tonight, so she could come up and if we have any questions. Who's had an enjoyable evening sitting here watching everything? I prefer being on this side. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat refreshing. <clears throat> so I just thought I'd be here, Rusty, in case there were any questions relative to the letter and the proposal that I sent to you. Have any questions? No. Okay. I think, could you just give us an explanation of what you're looking for so that the public, you know, rather sure. than us just sure, be that's aware a great question. What, what, what you're planning on doing with it and why you feel that it's necessary? Okay, great, great question. Um, as you know, we have an uh, interim municipal agreement with the town relative to the use of franchise fees to fund um, uh, PEG, which is public, um, public television, and uh, we have now an up, up and running public TV station, Channel 13 which is um, used for our school department and used within the buildings uh, with uh, all the events that happen uh, in addition to all the meetings and um, um, business meetings that go on every month with the school board. So we've been able to use that. Um, this year in, my pr in the proposal that we brought to you, is some of it is what we've been proposing each year. We asked to um, fund the um, part-time position of our media coordinator that works 20 hours a week in the district. Um, his responsibility is, is to help us with all the filming, all the programming, putting um, all of the uh, programs onto Channel 13, also working with the, um, the team from Channel 22 uh, to make sure that the events that are staged here uh, get uploaded and sent to the Channel 13. So John oversees all of that work. He also helps with all the purchasing of equipment um, and uh, he, he um, uh, oversees that, makes sure that all of the equipment is in uh, a good running order. Um, this year, in our pro in the proposal that um, that I sent to you, it includes John's salary, and it also includes uh, about um, ten thousand dollars worth of equipment that is pretty standard upgrades. Um, I, I think I sent you a list of uh, materials that you know, recording monitors, hard drives. Uh, we did add another camera so that we have multiple cameras to, to stage with events and um, different microphones now. We have microphones that, that, that can be worn on the lapels rather than handheld microphones. Um, we tried to improve the quality of the production. That was our, John's main force and the recommendations that he and our tech director made to me. Improve the quality of the program and that was through some of the equipment. But probably the biggest piece of equipment that was new this year is a system to replace Nexus. Nexus is the, is the uh, piece of equipment that allows us to, um, I, gotta t I gotta check my notes here, because <laughs> it does get complicated. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's a system that um, allows us to um, uh, use uh, playback, uh, use a video format, um, that's current. Right now, the Nexus system that we're using uh, is not capable of doing the new format uh, for MPEG-4, so I told you it gets complicated. Um, the, the new system will also allow us to have better quality. 
but the new system will allow us to have multiple formats. Um, and you know that means any v uh, a video. I could take a video using my iPhone or my iPad. That can be easily uploaded onto the new system, which is the Castus system to replace Nexus. Um, would allow us to do video on demand. Right now, one of the problems that we have is just to upload and program edit, burn it, transcode it, and upload program onto our system right now is very long consuming in terms of time, um, a long process, quality isn't, isn't very good. This system will allow us to have that um, on demand because we have got some concerns from constituents that they're not able to um, uh, watch our programming. They see it on channel 13, but if you miss that program, you can't access it. Um, on on the on our station uh, on demand, so that's what we're trying to improve on. Uh, will allow us to do live streaming, um, live video feeds. As you know, lots of times we're out with the with the youngsters, um, whether they're on field trips or whether they're doing activities in school. So that this this new system would allow that. Um, we also know that this system is in collaboration with the system for the town. So if your system ever went down, that system is always the backup. Um, the other nice part about this is, is that at any point in time, your system can break in to something that we're programming. Let's say the police or the fire, or there's an emergency, or you want to scroll across the screen that tomorrow's high tides on channel 13, as well as you do on channel 22, we'll, we're able to do that with the new system. So it's current technology. Um, unfortunately, the system that we have now, the Nexus system, um, it can't be, um, is no longer manufactured, so now we can't get um, uh, items to repair and to keep it serviced. So uh, that's why you saw an increase of $29,000 for that uh, for that particular piece of equipment for our studio. Actually, um, Jim sat with us when we met with, uh, with the folks who went over this whole system. Um, and um, so he got a sense of, of what the product could do and what it would deliver for us. Yeah, I, uh, I, I was the one that instigated last year anyways the, the Warren article that brought all the money mm -hmm. into the, the cable, you know, that people were spending on their, their cable bill, which I thought was important. And uh, I'm the representative to the cable, the, the selectman's representative to the cable advisory committee there. And I blame myself just a little bit. I, I wish there was more coordination between the, t the, the, the the town and the school right now. And I blame myself for that a little bit, not trying to get more coordination on that, you know, with with the guys. But I do I do support what they're talking about. Uh, you know, we we made a motion and we <coughs> created a position here, a part time position to have because we said we needed that. You know, when you're talking about the Channel 22 and Channel 13, Channel 13, I mean, educationally speaking, when you're thinking about producing that type of thing and getting that out to the public of what the children in the school are doing, it's crucial. I mean, it's not just talking about school committee or administration. You're talking about the schools and what are the schools doing and what are we producing and what are we putting out there for the public, for the parents, what kind of interactive type of uh, activities are we doing. So I, I would support this. I would support this wholly, and I would support, though, also more coordination between the two, so that the, so that the right hand knows what the left hand's <coughs> doing, you know. And and because I think sometimes what happens is, you know, we all get our own little territory, and we want to keep our territory. And I think a, a, an intermingling of the territories. We actually had a discussion today. Were you in my office? <laughs> we <laughs> actually had a discussion today about that very same thing, and that by that coordination between the town and the school district um, that we felt we could even have greater efficiencies uh, in a lot of different areas. So that's something that we are very interested in exploring. Great minds think alike. You know? I guess so. Rick? Oh, yeah, uh, I'm waiting for Jim's motion and, and superintendent. Thank <laughs> Make you. A motion for, thank you for the go along. great work you do. I have a couple questions first. Sure. Um, I understand the, the CATSIS thing, and, and I've talked with our people here, too, and, mm -hmm. and they're showing a real interest in that. But until we go to that, I notice you're trading in the Nexus unit on that thing. That's town property? Um, 
the trade in is in that in yes that? it was under the catsus okay hold on a minute and just there was yep, a trade in for it and okay. where we still have that system because you own that system right. all of the equipment is is owned by okay. right yeah. So I was just, you know, it, it would give us a backup if, God forbid, something happened here, like happened last year. That's and we, and we bought a spare one. Uh, we actually right, bought one right. on, and uh, had it refurbished. But right. that would give us that other piece in case we did it and, and where it is. It, it's yours. It that, is town. That should. I I just noticed that that should not be in there. That the equipment is all owned by you. I made that clear in my letter to you, and it is all marked that it's town property, not school district property. Right, and when when you guys bid out on your equipment, I know we have a purchasing policy here where we have to put out at least three bids um, for for town equipment. So I don't know if right. that's there's, there's there's three different companies that um, this happens to be the group that we talk to to get some idea about pricing, but um, they will do the same thing. Um, just just because we we've run into that many times where we haven't right, and so and. There's a not lot of a lot of companies in the area that do this. Right, this and a lot kind of times of work, you so. can't get three bids. You right. may only get right. one, maybe two. But so long as we've put that request out there to at least three or more, then we can say that we've done that. You know, it's the old saying: you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Right. Uh, we we can put it out there to everybody. So long as we do that, then it's fair and open to all the public that that we are trying our best to get the best price. As you know, we we operate under the, that same rule, and um, the, I know that there's not a lot of companies that do this kind do of work. Too, yeah. There's really been only two that I'm familiar with: the company, this company, and Northeast Audiovisual. Yep. Um, and so we pretty much have been doing business with them, um, either one of those. But again, I, I this is preliminary approval. We right. didn't move forward with anything until I knew that I had absolutely uh, the blessing of the town on the trade-in. Yes. Is it more economical to use that as a backup or more economical to use it as a, as a trade-in and get money for it? I, I That's something that we should coordinate and figure out before we right. so say we should one ask, way or the other. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, we could do that, but we need to know. Yeah. You know, we need to make sure that if we if we do need it, we have it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because. We have a backup now, I believe, right? I believe we do. Okay. I believe we do. But, yes, you do. So, and because the cats, as I know. <laughs> The CATSA system, I know I've talked to our guys in the uh, the other room, and it's, they, it, it's the wave of the future. The, the Nexus is no longer produced, so to get it's, right. it's and slowly being faded out. And so I, I can understand your point. So just didn't want to spend the money in servicing it thousands of dollars every year for a system that, you know, and finding parts is, is, is going to be difficult. Harder and so harder. that's why that's right. we finally decided this year to do to do this. Okay. So we have a motion by Jim, seconded by Phil, to allow the uh, 66, 2379. There it is. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming in tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. No parking at Place Cove. Access to the beach. Mr. Chairman, we've had a number of complaints that... Um, from people who want access to the beach and have difficulty getting onto the beach. Uh, that people are parking directly in front of the stairway access and making it difficult for folks to get down onto the beach. So what we'd like to do is post signs either side of the stairway exit entrance way so people will not park there. And it'll be clear and open for folks to get in. Make Why that, they're parking there, I don't know. Make that motion that we put a sign saying, hey dummy, don't park here. <laughs> I'll second that motion. All those yeah. in favor? I won't support the, uh, the the dummy part. <laughs> <laughs> but the, so, okay, unanimous. <laughs> and now we have a the no parking 20 feet either side of the turnaround on Levitt Road. As you, as the board remembers, and you, you had approved this some time ago, that uh, we have put in a turnaround on Levitt Road uh, in conjunction with a property owner down there at the end of the street, mm -hmm. almost at the end of the street. Um, all of a sudden people are parking right where you have to back out and that causes a problem because if trucks pull in there to back out they can't see where this people are parking so we're suggesting is like any other street intersection that we have no parking 20 feet either side so there will be no 
opportunity for someone to have an accident inadvertently. I'll make a motion that we... Motion by Regina. Second. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Unanimous. Why are you talking on no parking signs? Sir. I did have one today, that, or oh, yesterday, with the clock, the new clock being put up across the street here. Okay. Right in front of that, there's a no parking sign, and it distracts from the clock. Yeah, I, when was, I was trying to take a picture the other day. <laughs> can, we, can we have that one moved? Yeah, we can move that. So it's out of the way yeah. of the clock. So it's still there, but out of the way. Yep, so, we can do that. Thank you. Uh, next one is a request with no objection for a one-day service of alcohol outside the GOAT on 1118. Do you have anything on that? It, just, it was a request. We have no objection from anyone so far. Uh, we did go out by the police department. Uh, I've heard nothing to say it's, it's objected to. It's only one day. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Unanimous. And a schedule of a, the photo shoot for the annual report cover. I guess we'll have to come up with a new date because you're going to be away. And, and I Rick was going to be away. Yeah, Rick's going to be away. I know there's somebody else going to be away. So um, we'd, we'd have to pick another date and try to get it to you. Well, we were talking We were talking about originally the 21st. Right. Can we do the 28th? Let's find a way. 28th. 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 28th is a Monday following Thanksgiving. Yeah, I believe so, yes. It, I believe it's going to be in the morning. That's my understanding, yes. So. Okay. Yeah. Everybody sure. okay with that? Yep. Then I will have them make that the 28th. Any other new business? Seeing none. Closing comments? I have one. Just to be clear, okay. that when we talked about that money for the school for the cable, that comes out of the franchise fee. Jesus. That yes. comes out yes. of the that, that has right. nothing to do with the budget, nothing to do with taxes. There's no money being raised. That's money we already have, and it's from the cable franchise fee. Right. Just so the people are aware of that. Facts. <laughs> do you have, uh, Mr. Chairman? If I could just request that the board uh, have a motion and second to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A, colon 3, Roman 2, small c, and e, reputation and litigation. Motion by Phil, seconded by Regina. I need a roll call vote. Yes, aye. please. Aye. 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 There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Mac.